I'll take it off and the audio will be popped out onto our podcast. And a very good evening. You're very welcome to the Breadwater Podcast, the very first Breadwater Podcast for 2023 and for some time now. Yeah, well, um, I decided to bring them back out and uh, well, why not when you've got amazing guests like the one who's looking back at me. How are you doing, Gary Doherty? You're very welcome to the Breadwinner Podcast. Um, it's great to have you here. Thanks very much for taking time out of your busy schedule. And um, what uh, what a way to start 2023. How are you? I am fantastic. Thanks for having me on, Porik. And uh, I'm sorry we're only getting around to doing this now. I'd wanted to do this a long time ago. You and you might, we might be talked about it at one point. And uh, it's great to be here. Um, uh, yeah, I'm flat out, man. I'm very busy. I'm very grateful. And uh, long may and it will continue. Tell us, Gary, for people that probably might not have heard of Gary Doherty, but um, might have heard of the Think Network. Give us, a, an introdu- give us a bit of an introduction. What, what, what do they call it, that elevator pitch? Maybe tell us uh, um, a wee bit more about you because you've, you've done some extraordinary stuff, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Well, funny, funny you, you say that, you know. Um, I have really evolved over time. Think Network was conceived about what about four or five years ago now, 2018, uh, was first a thought. And and the vision and the mission have always remained the same, but we have evolved in our offerings and our products, our services and the value that we offer and who we offer it to. But the, the mission and the values uh, uh, have always remained the same. And that is to support ambitious individuals to be the very best versions they can be. And that can take many forms, public speaking, mastermind groups, PR, global media publications, TED Talks, whatever that, whatever the best is for you. It could be growing your business, it could be finding your niche, it could be developing X, Y, Z. And, and that's very much how we've evolved from just motivational mm-hmm. speaking events to now to now working with uh, people all over the world and placing them in uh, big media publications. So we've we've very we've very much evolved, but the mission remains the same. It's to help support mm-hmm. ambitious individuals to be the very best versions of themselves. And we just have have evolved in different ways of actually providing that value. Mm. And and I suppose that, as, you, as you've indicated, it involves a lot of different aspects as well, because the um, the aspects, suppose I wouldn't come across, you would have been of the um, of the standard days event, you know, and you would have brought in speakers. So something that I've never never seen done in the Northwest, bringing in speakers and, and, and really getting yeah. um, just not the run of the mill speakers as such. Yeah. Some really really good people that um, think we it differently. And uh, yeah. I suppose tell, tell us a bit about that because I, I know you started it off and then you started to get a bit of momentum and then you started to build it up then gradually. Yeah. Um, talk, talk us through that journey. Um, you, you know, you say we had never seen anything in the Northwest. Guess what, Park? I hadn't seen anything like this anywhere, like in Northern Ireland, the UK, nowhere. I know there's, when I look back now in history and see things on YouTube, other people were mm-hmm. doing a lot very commercialized events and with these strong commercial agendas the beauty about what we did was there was no commercial agenda i started this off as a passion product for the greater good for the change that i wanted to see for the motivation that i wanted to see for the inspiration that i wanted to see and receive i i what i decided i would be the change that i wanted to see and that doesn't make me better than anybody or it doesn't make me any greater than anybody, but it just means I was thinking slightly differently in a period of time in our country when not many people were thinking this way, certainly. Um, very a lot of, in, in hindsight, it's, I suppose I've adopted a lot of American uh, uh, initiatives, I'm going to say, um, subconsciously because I wasn't even benchmarking anybody. I But I, I just developed something that I wanted to be part of myself, for me, for the likes of me, for like-minded people like me, for my network. And that's, and it, there was no financial gain, no money, no money, even, and if there had been, that would have been okay, but there wasn't. It was free events. It was getting like-minded people together. It was creating that buzz, that energy, that, that, that serving mentality that I wanted to receive in my life 
So I figured I need to give this out before I can receive it. And 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 I, that's what I did, Porik. And it just grew legs and it grew momentum. People started asking in between events, what now? What now? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> this is, <laughs> you know, I'm learning on the go. This is a passion for me. This is just something I do. This is, I, this, I don't even earn money. People thought I was earning money from this stuff. I was like, no, I work. I work 10 hours a day and then I come home and do this. And then, and then, and then I suppose I was following my passion and then I figured out this can be a way of life. Why not live this all the time? And then, and then I started to monetize it and we started to have private groups and Facebook and mastermind and accountability. And then it just took off and it's now absolutely went through the roof big time. Yeah. And I'm going to take you back because you, you, you know, you've covered so much there and we're yeah. on five, five minutes. Um, <laughs> but but for, for you, Gary, there's a, there's a great story um, behind you. And yeah. the thing about, I, I like about people, um, you know, that, that, that try to go out and do something different. They're obviously thinking a wee bit different, but there has to be a reason for that as well. Tell us about the old Gary. Tell us about the Gary that was maybe um, back, yeah. back in the day. Um, the old Gary, the old Gary was still me, you know, I've always had a very inquisitive mindset, Porik. I have always, I'll tell you something, right, and I hope that, and uh, sometimes you have to be careful in Northern Ireland about the way you speak, you know, if I've been taken, uh, thinking too big or speaking too big or too confident or too bright, whatever, whatever. So, so uh, you know, but I remember, Porik, when I was very young, when I would have been 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I remember looking at the successful people in our society, businessmen and maybe where I lived, maybe hotel owners or car dealers. I used to look at these entrepreneurs, these successful people, right? And and they were successful by status. They were successful, measurable means of, you know, looking at them as they were successes. And I used to think there's nothing special about you. <laughs> and I, I could do that and I could do it better probably in my mind. Right? Mm. In my mind, I could. Whether I could or not at that stage, probably not because I was only young. But in my mind, I was always, always, always thinking like that. I never was looking at it thinking, oh, hating on them or, or thinking you're useless or, or, or you're greedy or you're lucky or anything like that. It wasn't that. It's just in my mind, I just felt I could do that standing on my head and do it better. It wouldn't have mattered what it was. When I went into a shop or I went into a business or I watched somebody, I was always looking at it and I was I was thinking, God, it would be better that way. Or I know if I did that, I I, I would do I would promote it better, or I would do it, I would do I would I, I would improve it. And I always had that mindset. But guess what? I never had the courage to speak it out loud. I never had the courage to tell anybody. It stayed in here and it lived in there and it stayed in there for from no age day right up to to got married mm. and and so like f from that aspect there was was that your ego playing a wee bit there as well because um obviously your thought i mean you think um would it be fair to say that um you're thinking that you can do a lot better but that is that uh, explain that maybe to your I, 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 I think it's just an abundant mindset um, mm -hmm. I think from a young age, subconsciously, I had an abundant mindset. And guess what? You talk about ego. Ego's okay. Ego's good. It, we all have an ego. But as long as it doesn't go out of control. Mm -hmm. Confidence, humble confidence. That's what I needed, but I didn't have. But I still had the power of my own mind and my own thoughts. And nobody can, nobody can control them, only me. So I subconsciously I was like a I was like I was like this unconscious competent, you know, even back then. I was thinking these these abundant thoughts, didn't know how, didn't know who, didn't know if I was going to, didn't know anything really, only what I thought. Um, but it, all the same, when I look back, I had that abundant mindset that I strongly feel and know is required to vibrate at a level where you not only think differently. More importantly, you act differently, and then you get different results. So I suppose I was doing that way back in the day. That was the start, if you know what I mean. Mm. Yeah. 
and that was back. And, and suppose you, 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 your story beforehand, like, tell us a little bit about that because um, you have a great story to tell, and um, it was probably a bit more different to, to what people would, would suspect and how you came about this and how you actually have, have started into, yeah, you know, you know, really into the. To this aspect of, of, of yeah. abundance and of, of yeah. um, what what aspect are you talking about? Are you, are you mean in the, the property side of things back in the day? And yeah, well, when you first started out, I suppose in business, you had yeah. you had this idea. You could go a lot further than other individuals, but that led you into something else. What was that? Um, I was working in an electrical store as a sales manager. And that gave me the confidence to talk to people, to be myself, to 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 achieve, to get results, and 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 and, and that I had that drive in me, and that, and that nurtured that drive and confidence in me when I was about when I was about what age? About twenty four. I'm forty six now, so it's about what twenty two years ago. And and I met a guy that was coming in to the 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 retail outlet, and he was a property guy. He owned an estate agency, he owned a portfolio of properties, he was buying and letting and selling and renting and all the rest of it. And I thought that those, that, that, that mindset again, where I was watching him, talking to him, and I was thinking, you're a great guy, you're a lovely guy, but if you can do it, I can definitely do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was, I was watching how he operated and the success he was having, and I was thinking, we're no different. But you're achieving huge success in your life, and I'm 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 in a 95, and that and that and anybody listening to this, that's okay if you're happy because happiness is the is the goal really, you know, uh, for me. And uh, and and if people are happy, that's great. But I wasn't, not really deep down. I wasn't fulfilling my potential. So so I just got to build a relationship with this man. I I, I learned how to get on the property ladder. At that stage, it wasn't that difficult. You just needed to. Uh, not be uh, uh, risk averse. Uh, it was easy to get the mortgages and so on and so forth. So I del delved into that world and acquired a, a vast property portfolio in a short space of time, and bought the, actually bought his business from him. Bought the estate, bought him out of his estate agency. Um, I started a, let, a foreign property sales and letting business. I started. Mm -hmm. a, a, I was a, a a partner in a financial services business. Um, and, uh, yeah, we enjoyed two or th two years of great success, bubble burst property, um, the, the property, the property markets, uh, went upside down. I wasn't, um, uh, that clever in terms of my, how I would have used money or created wealth from making money. I wasn't that clever in that area. I had the ability to make money. But not to create wealth from money that I made, and uh, so so we lost everything. Um, Thirty plus properties, my home, three four vehicles, uh, everything lost everything, and uh, that was that story, Parik. Really, <laughs> just just like that. And, and suppose the reason I asked you those questions is because obviously a lot of, a lot of learnings from that, a lot a lot of takeaways and different things that you you, you probably. Would it be fair to say you wouldn't be where you are without those learnings now? No, I'm, I'm glad it happened. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm grateful it happened uh, because it was as much as I was entrepreneurial and opportunistic and uh, not risk averse, and, and I and I and I did well. Um, I feel that it was a very artificial environment for me to do well in. It wasn't sustainable for anybody, no matter how clever you were. Um, uh, and I feel that I feel I didn't handle making a lot of money in a short space of time too well in terms of my own lifestyle and my own temperament and my own attitude. Um, and I sort of lost my way a wee bit that way. Um, I wasn't the best version of me. I wasn't listening to people I should have been listening to. I thought I knew best. Sure, why not? Everything you touch is turning to gold. Um, I felt that I was right all the time. I felt that there was no end to this success. Everything I touched was going to work, and it did, uh, and, until it didn't. Um, <laughs> and then, and then, 
So I really I, I learned so many life lessons, Parik, you know, personally and professionally about myself as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a confidant, as a businessman. I learned loads and loads of lessons and I'm grateful for it and thank God for it. We're unpacking a lot of stuff here on the Breadwinners podcast. And, and Gary, thanks for being so open and honest, as I say, because, you know, it's, it's, it's grand to actually talk about certain things that, that has gone well in life, but things that haven't gone so well. So well. There's, there's learnings in that too. Um, and, and, and that journey, uh, I suppose, you, you know, people that probably are just starting to, to watch our, our podcast tonight, you know, the understanding that, um, you know, I'm always a person to see what other aspects you could learn from someone from that time. So if you're looking back now on, on that journey, what would you tell yourself from the position you are in now? Um, remain humble. Um, continue to believe in yourself. Confidence is okay. Remain confident. Remain, work, have your self belief. Collab, be open to collaborate, collaboration. Be open to knowing and accepting that you're not always right and often aren't. Um, being open to and to and accepting that there are many, many, many people better than you in different areas of any business, uh, including mine right now. You know, I'm the least valuable person or the least skilled person in lots of areas of my business. But I have realized that ego doesn't play a part. You know, you, 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 you should be surrounded by people that are technically and uh, uh much cleverer than you in areas that you need the, those people in and that you can give them value and they give you value. And I think I didn't I didn't I didn't really fully appreciate that Porik back in the day, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I I thought I was the best at everything from marketing to selling to business development to recruitment to hiring to you know, you name it and I knew it, you know what I mean? And uh when really I knew very little. Really, I just had a vision and a mission and the drive and the determination to go and to go and go and make things happen. And I'm a very different person today. I wasn't a bad person then, but I'm a more I'm a wiser person today. Mm-hmm. And that's suppose that comes with experience too, because you're a wiser person. You see, your your grandfather as well. So you yeah. know, there's <laughs> just a bit of that. Yeah, beautiful man. Beautiful. It's a beautiful moment for me and my family. You know, we're. We're 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 very grateful, and um, we're very grateful for for the good fortune that we have in our life. And um, hasn't always been this way. You can imagine the trials and tribulations that I went through in two thousand and nine when everything went upside down. And we worked. I worked tirelessly for ten years, believing in myself when nobody else did. Well, very few did. Um, believing in myself when all I had was a dream and a and a wing and a prayer. And 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 uh, but it didn't matter as long as I believed in me. You know what I mean? As long as, that, as, long as I believed in me. And where do you think that came from for you to keep just to keep keep grinding yeah. out, keep going? Tell me a bit about that. Um, well, the belief in me really stemmed from my wife and my father-in-law. They believed in me. They believed in me and gave me that sort of. Uh, uh, I sort of borrowed that belief and affirmed it to myself over time and eventually believed it myself. You know, so somebody else believed in me first. But that grind and all the rest of it, you know what, you know what I'm going to tell you, Porik? Believe I believe a lot of us, if not all of us, are born with that. But guess what? Some people aren't aware that they have that that resilience in them, that that ability to keep going no matter what. And that's when they mentally give up. When and when they don't actually have their self worth isn't at a level where they believe in themselves to keep going. I believe that that resilience is deep inside everybody, somewhere, somewhere. But some people give up because they don't either believe in themselves, they don't believe they have that, you know. And I'm proof, and in my eyes anyway, that it is deep down because I didn't always believe in me. Do you know what I mean? And 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 and. I borrowed that belief and I suppose that unearthed the resilience in me to keep going. I don't know any other way. I don't know how to quit. And that doesn't make me the best winner ever. I'm not saying that, even though I am. (laughs) 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 Even though I I am. But you know what I mean. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I don't know any other way, Park. 
I'm going to lock something here because you, you know, as I say, there is a few a few aspects that, that some people should know. Like you, you brought TEDx to Derry um, City, you know, yeah. a huge achievement. Ulster Tatler Businessman of the Year, huge achievement. Uh, the Think Network, huge achievement as well. But where did you get TEDx is a huge brand across the world and bringing that to Northern Ireland and the, the south as well I suppose there's a lot of people from around the border areas as well get that opportunity to put themselves on a, on international scale which is which is phenomenal yeah where where the bloody hell did you get this idea you're going to bring that man do you want to know something you know when you'll not anybody listening to this here will not be surprised when I said that when I was younger, that inquisitive mind, that looking at things and thinking and wondering and, you know, dreaming and allowing myself to go there in my mind, you know, I remember I had a I had a mentoring session with a guy that was mentoring me at the time, and and one of his bucket list things to do was a TED talk, right? And in conversation, he said to me, I'm going to do a TED talk. I'm going to do a TED talk and all the rest of it. Now, at this stage, I had never public spoke before. I'm going back eight years or whatever it was. I hadn't, I wasn't, I, I'm, I'm st I still don't look on myself as a, like a public speaker, even though I speak publicly. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I just, I do it when I, when something buzzes me, when something I'm motivated by, something I want to get involved in. But I'm not one of those circuit speakers that, that loves being invited and speaking all over the place mm -hmm. for no reason other than just to be speaking again. I'm not that guy. Do you know what I mean? I've turned down a lot of speaking stuff recently because it's just not adding value for me and I don't have the desire to do it. I do it at universities and different things now and again when it floats my boat. But So anyway, we were talking about TED Talks and it was just like a figment. It was like a pipe dream. And I said, I said, wow. I said, uh, what a... What a what a what a dream that would be. And then he said, you should do it too. And then I was sort of a bit bravado. I just went, oh, go right then, stick it down there as a goal. Sure, I'll do one too. <laughs> right? And 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 it was that was it out. That was it out of my mouth. Right? And and guess what? You, this, the same guy has never done one and I've done two. You know what I mean? And then all the rest of the Ted stuff with it. But uh just see what see when I get see what see when see when something gets my attention. And the more I thought about it, the more when I started to speak about it, I started to be, it started to come on my radar more. I started to notice it more. I started to think about it more. Like, probably anybody listening to this, you know, if you go and change your car and you're driving home and that, say it's a black Volkswagen Golf, what do you start noticing on the road? More black Volkswagen Golf, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's in your conscious awareness, right? So we started talking about TEDx. So I started then noticing that speaker, that event, you know, that viral talk. I started noticing these things because I was thinking about them. I was consciously aware of them, blah, blah, blah. And I started then turning up at events. TEDx Stormont was the only one in Northern Ireland really doing anything at the time. Uh, Eva Grossman, big shout out to her. Um, even though we've drifted, she was still an inspiration for me at the time. And I turned up at these events, sat in the back row. Nobody knew me. And I just took it in. And then I started to think, ah, I'm going to do one of these someday. And then I started to think... Uh, I wonder has there ever been one in Derry? So then I researched it. 26 years, never had been one. And, and 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 then I inquired why, and they told me it had been so many failed applicants. They hadn't got the message in right. They hadn't, the application wasn't good enough, basically. So I thought, mm -hmm. I just made a decision one day, Porik, I swear to you now, I said to my wife, and I said to anybody who was listening to me, I'm going to bring that to Derry. I'm going to do that. 100%. 100%. No ifs, buts, I'm not going to try, I'm not going to wish, I'm not going to apply, I'm not going to hope, I'm not going to attempt. That's all but that's all negative language. That's all that's all I'm not about that. I just said I'm doing it. I think I remember that. <laughs> I think I remember you saying that too. I've already got it. That, that's a God's honest truth. And I started to put the whole think and grow rich and Napoleon Hill stuff into practice. Um, I hired a photographer. I went to the Guild Hall. I got a photo shoot done where I was going to host the first event. I bought a red jumper, a Ralph Lauren jumper I was wearing. It cost me a fortune. And I was red for the red dot. And that was me visualizing, man, honestly. And I had the pictures of my phone. I even bought a red dot. I bought a damn red dot. I bought the red letters and everything. I have them here in my roof space now. And uh, that's the sort of the, the links I was going to. And this is before anybody knew a damn thing about it. Nobody knew a thing. Nobody knew what was happening. There was no event. 
you know, how important do you, how important do you think that is if someone's got an idea or they've got something that they want to do? It might not be business. It might be something else. It could be a triathlon, a marathon, whatever it might be. Um, how how important do you think it is to to get your yourself right first of all and tune that you're actually going to do that or um, that's everything. Because of, so, hmm. That's everything. It's a waste of time. Otherwise, you must have the desire. You must have the desire. It's like me at the minute. I have a holiday booked right for July. I need to get to the gym, right? <laughs> I, 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 want, I want to be the, the most in shape 47 year old walking about that island on the 12th of July when I go for two weeks, right? And I will be. I have now got the desire to go to the gym because I have something, an achievement that I want to achieve. You must have the desire. You must be emotionally connected with the desire. Otherwise, you're going to give up at the first sign. Otherwise, you're going to look for a plan B. Otherwise, you're going to look for a door to open the room. You're going to look for a way out. I don't have any ways out in my life. I don't want any. There are none. So would you tell me now, I'm going to book the photo shoot, and uh, we're going to have all that together, all ready to go. Uh, when, when July time? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there are not many people as crazy as me, so I'm, like, I'm not saying... In my way is the right way, but it's the right way for me. Mm. Tell us about the. Um, I suppose we touched we touched on the different aspects uh, of, of the Think Network. How you set it up, and obviously the first step was was putting it out there with TEDx and um, yeah, TED Talks. You'd say yeah, bring, bringing that to to, to Darien, which was a huge achievement. And um, the 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 different people that you've empowered now to move to move on with their journey and and, and different aspects. It was. Tell us a little bit about that because um, you know you you bring world speakers uh, to, yeah. to 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 your networks and things like that. So t tell us a wee bit about that as well. Yeah, that's one of the most fulfilling parts of what I do, Porik. To be honest with you, like you just touching the TEDx thing there. Do you know what my proudest achievement? My proudest achievement, other than bringing getting the license and bringing it to the city first time ever, and then we went on and broke all records over a pandemic. Most successful event in the world, most successful coach in the world, most successful organizer in the world, all everything, right? We broke everything that you could imagine, every record. And um, but the most fulfilling thing for me regarding the TEDx, and it really goes back to my values about supporting other people to be the very best versions of themselves. And I'm very in line with my values and what I do, you know, with the business and what the actions and the service that we provide. And go back to the TEDx was the youth event. We did a TEDx youth event and we uncovered 19 TEDx speakers from the from the the, the county of Derry. First time, second time in the whole of Ireland's history. The first time in Northern Ireland's history. Was there a youth event in Northern Ireland and we partnered with Young Enterprise, Carol Fitzsimmons, big shout out to Carol. Um, the event wouldn't have been possible without her. And um, we, we, we broke all barriers. We went to all communities, all schools that wanted to be involved were involved. There were special needs. There was Catholic schools. There was Protestant schools. There was integrated schools. You name it. Everybody was involved and uh, it was the most watched youth event in Europe over the pandemic. Um, it's a legacy, you know, that, that's legacy. That's forever. Those young people, Porik, were 16 when they'd done their TED Talk. And if they all live a good life and live to 70 plus, whatever it may be, they, they're, they're 60, there's 50 and 60 years on the TEDx YouTube channel with 35 million people listening to their talk and making their families proud and making them proud and making their community proud, and making their school proud. That's fulfillment for me. And, and that made it all worthwhile. That's my proudest achievement with TEDx. Not my own talks. I did two talks, and one of them I give a damn about because it was personal to me. The other one I don't care about. That's the one that went viral, go figure. But And the second proudest achievement was my daughter doing it. Inspired and motivated my daughter, created a pathway for her to come and do it too. So they're, they're, they're my two proudest achievements. Mm. And uh, was that something you ever thought you would think um, that would be your your proudest achievement today? Uh, proudest achievement regards to TEDx. Mm -hmm. um, but um, no, no. When I started off, it was about doing a TED Talk of my own. That bucket list item, I'll do a TED Talk. Then it was about I'll bring TEDx to the city. That would have been the two proudest achievements. 
Um, but my own TED talk peels in the significance really with it all because I, it's proud. I'm proud of it, but it's not my proudest achievement. You know, we're 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 stronger together, and when you can have 19 people doing TED talks, it's much more fulfilling than doing one yourself, especially more, especially if you're in it for the right reasons, like I was. You know, it's a bit more crack too. Plenty in there, something about, um, but uh, it's something something to look back on. I suppose if you just joined us, you're you're listening to the Bedwar podcast with myself, Barry Kilfrey, and Gary B. Doherty. Where'd you get the B from? Is that for Barry? Is it or something or uh, Brian? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, Brian, Brian, Brian. My father's my father's called Brian, and uh, and uh, for social media reasons and uh, uh, technical reasons that'll bore everybody, it's best to have my middle name with a full stop. There's a there's a guy that heard used to play football for Norwich. Do you remember him? I do. Yeah, yeah. Bobby Gary. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, guy. Yeah. Like, he he takes up my space in Google. You see when people search. So for SEO. <laughs> For SEO purposes, he's it's a being Gary Doherty is a pain because you can't you, you won't find me um down the list on him. So, but there's only one Gary B Doherty, and so I, when people mm. type that in now, which they will when they see your name, and that's what I'm called in all articles, then they find what I'm what I'm doing. So stepping on, um, I know this is, this is late in the evening we're recording this, but um, uh, your wife's going to kill you. We're going to try and get you off. Uh, yeah. Lovely, but uh, I suppose oh, good. us North us Northwest men, we love to talk and talk. But yeah. you, you from 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 that the Think Network really got legs, and and suppose people that might just be tuning in just those are wondering what. Well, well, where is this all going? But there is a story, I promise you. Um, yeah. you stepped it up then with the Think Network and. Tell us about some of the speakers that you brought and tell us about some of the, the, the knowledge that you brought as well because and you continue to do that. Yeah, the, the, the events, the, very early we realised that the events should all be themed, right? Speakers should be speaking on, you know, different themes and themes that were passionate. To, again, it went back to, back to what did I want to be involved in? What did I want to hear? Uh, and uh, so we come up with themes like resilience, self-confidence, you know, uh, self belief, um, different thing. Hope was another one. Even though I, I, when I look back, I wish I hadn't used that, but we did. Um, hope, self belief, self confidence, resilience, um, inspiration, motivation. You know, we had all these themes, and the speakers. Again, I looked around, Porik, in the world. Who did I want to listen to? Who, 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 who was buzzing me from afar? And 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 I, I figured I'd trust my intuition and think, well. If I'm into this sort of stuff and I'm really enjoying them and they have a good story, three or four hundred dollar people might enjoy this too, right? So so I, I was going on my own intuition. I, and then obviously we want the events to be as inclusive and diverse as possible. So we look at different genres, genders, expert areas, industries, and all the rest of it. And I always looked at who was the standout, who was the thought leader, who who was out to who was really making an impact. And those and those are the people that I approached um, in Northern Ireland initially, and then we worked our way out. With Northern Ireland, we had people like singer songwriter Brian Kennedy, who has uh, had cancer battles on and off, um, and who who was a gay man in in Belfast at the height of the troubles, and and it was wasn't an easy thing to do to come out at that time. He talks about it very freely. Um, we've had. Also, we had oh my god, we've had everybody. Um, we've had all the, 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 we've, had all, we've had all the influencers and all the rest of it, you know. And um, as I say, suppose that that aspect is, is uh, you've you've moved that on in other gear as well. You have your own um, YouTube channel as well, interviewing some of the great minds around the world. But also, you touched on it earlier on there about think and grow rich. Um, mm. Tell us a story about that. Because that, that's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. Think and Grow Rich really came from my, again, the inquisitive nature, talking to people in the personal development. And then I met a lady called Cleona O'Hara. Do you know Cleona? I do, yeah. yeah. No of her, yeah. You know, you should bring her on your podcast. She would be a great mind for your audience. And she would, you know, she brings a very, a very um, holistic approach to business and personal development and mindset growth and she's very successful and she would have a lot of wisdom and for your for your audience much more than I would have in that area but it's uh something that I, I Cleona came on my radar 
she was she was investing in companies in Derry at the time. She's from Derry. I was rising in Derry with the TEDx Derry stuff. Cleona then came and spoke at one of my events. I built a relationship with her over time. She was working for Bob Proctor at the time. She was very big with Napoleon Hill stuff. And she introduced me to thinking, Grow Rich. She sent me the classic edition. I don't have it at hand here. It's probably it's behind me. It's up there in the top shelf. Yeah, um, I see it, yeah. And uh, she introduced me to Think and Grow Rich. That was really the first personal development book I read. I've read it 10 times since, eight in audio. Um, and I'll read it another 10. Um, and that really planted the seeds of, of the su- principles of success, let's say. Desire, faith, auto-suggestion, all that fun stuff. And um, that's where my my passion and interest in thinking go rich began. Um, and I sense my TED talk was inspired by thinking go rich. My first TED talk, um, I featured in their magazine. I I now have I'm now friendly with the CEO of the foundation. Um, and and what's the space? You never know what I would be up to uh, regarding that uh, in the near future. And when I'm talking, when I'm, and I'm talking something big as well. So we have a bit of an exclusive there. Um, yeah, yeah. Just being used, gonna, gonna have a bit of a chat. Uh, but um, yeah, this will be this will be, be really, really big, potentially bigger than anything I've ever done. And tell me, um, all very exciting stuff. And uh, you know, you, you kind of touched on maybe two or three points there. That I'm looking back to where you were in 2008, 2009, to, to where you are now. There's a huge message in that, is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, you know, never give up, you know, never give up. Um, believe in yourself, even if nobody else does. Learn, learn lessons from your mistakes. Mistakes aren't failures. They're mistakes. They're temporary. Nothing lasts forever, not even this life. You know what I mean? Nothing lasts forever. You know, move through it. I think it was Winston Churchill said, but I think he stole it from somebody uh, as well. You talk about if you're going through hell, keep going you know nothing lasts you will go through it go you know go through it and move through it uh and grow through it and 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 keep learning surround yourself with the right people make sure that you're not taking opinions from everybody i don't take opinions from anybody i take advice from people that i value who have got expert knowledge or wisdom in a certain area i don't actually take advice from not a single person it's not advice. Everybody's advice. Everybody's got something to say. It's, it's, I'm not, I'm not advice opinions. I mean, I don't take listen to opinions of people. I take advice from valued confidants and people that have people that are experts in certain areas. And that they're big lessons for me, you know, stay humble as well. And, uh, and, and, and keep believing. And talk to me before we let you go as well. You're doing a lot on social schools. You have to, um, how do you, how do you deal with all that? What's that um, part? I missed, I missed the start of that. On, on social, on the social aspect, you, you yeah. put yourself out there quite, quite a lot, and I know yeah. that you said that it's, it can be difficult at times. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I, that. Social, social media is a beautiful tool. It is a necessary uh, part of modern business, particularly if you have an online business um it's it is essential if you are the figurehead of a business or a solo entrepreneur to start with um it's essential the people that don't embrace it for me are missing a trick and eventually do come around to embracing it um there's very few people that are very very successful that don't use it very few um and if they don't somebody else does it for them um so 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 i realized probably about four years ago i just had a a a strategy of throwing the kitchen sink at it that's how i remember that free turn of phrase that i used throw the kitchen sink at it be omnipresent be everywhere so you can't be missed now it's a very crude strategy right but guess what work for me right now, what I would say is, as time developed and you have more resources and you build your personal brand, you can be, you can become clever with being on social media. You can have, like for example, I let everybody know this right now, on our Think Network social media, it, I don't run it. I don't even have a login for any of the accounts. 
not the Think Network, not the Facebook, not the Twitter, not the Instagram. I have the I, I post on the LinkedIn social media page because it's attached to my personal page, but I don't post on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook ever. And I haven't done for about 18 months. My daughter looks after it now. My daughter my daughter works in the company now. You know, so and, and, and that's good to have a pair of hands like that to, to help you out. Um, uh, no doubt she, she's, she's, she understands it a lot better than us guys, anyway, I would say. Yeah, uh, well, she does. She certainly understands it more than more than me. I know I don't know about you, but she 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 understands it more than me. And, uh, you know, she, she's my eyes and ears online and on Think Network. She has her finger in the pulse. She listens to me, not preaching, or maybe she would say preaching. She she listens to me, my, my mission and vision every day. We talk every day, all the time about this. Anything going out is a fair representation of my vision, um, and and um, she represents it very very well. Um, and for us, it's about putting out positive content into the world, empowering content, celebrating other individuals, uh, creating events, creating opportunities, giving people a voice. And we do it very well. And uh, my daughter executes that online even better than, than than I could. And what has been the obstacles, Gary, before I let you go? Because there's bound to be some obstacles there. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, would you be would you be surprised if I told you money wasn't one of them? Even when you don't have the money, yeah, right. When you know, people listening to that, there's a lot. When you don't, money wasn't the obstacle, and still isn't the obstacle now that we have more resources, you know. Because, uh, uh, without going into too much detail, I always wondered what it would be like if I had X amount of pound. What would I do with my business? Would I do this, 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 and this, right? And then when you have it. Mm. You, you, you don't know what to do with it in your business. <laughs> so if money's not the obstacle, it's not even the solution sometimes. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the biggest obstacle I have found growing as a business, and I still find it, is developing the systems and processes, the contacts, the methodology that works to scale and grow efficiently. That is the, they are the obstacles from, you know, uh, growing a business like this. Uh, because there's so many people in the world looking to take lots of money for funnels and ads and all that stuff. And, and I've spent fortunes in the last year and lost fortunes. And it's, it's getting that right. That's, that's not, it's not the barrier, but that's the challenge. It's the ongoing challenge. The proper systems and processes and, 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 trusted people to grow efficiently like I am and I will continue to. Mm-hmm. Well, Gary, it's been a phenomenal story. And as I say, thanks very much for joining me on the very first Breadwinner podcast. I had it out uh, before and during the pandemic and then due to different aspects, we suppose we had to reevaluate everything, but um, it's been great to get you on. It's been, uh, it's, it's been also enlightening, I suppose, for some of our, our viewers and our listeners who have listened to the content as well about, you know, the journey that you've been on. We could chat for another hour, yeah. but you, you, you did give some tips before you left, um, before, before earlier on, you gave them out, but anything yeah. else, maybe give, give us your top three. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, make sure you're digesting the right material. Look behind me, you, you'll see nothing but good material that I, I take in through my eyes and my ears and through your five senses. What are you taking on? Stay away from news. Stay away from newspapers. Stay away from that crap. Stay away from people that gossip. Stay away from negativity. Stay away from trolls. Stay away from, you know, uh, he said, she said. Stay away from, you know, people that bring your vibration down. And I don't care if that's family. Stay away from them. Minimize your time with them. You, you are number one. Look after you. You are the most important person in your life. You know, we're not great at saying that, Porik, you know, in Northern Ireland, over in a hist- over history. Well, I, well I, I recognize that. And guess what? When, I'm, when I am the best me, I can be the best father, the best husband, the best son, the best friend, the best business partner. You know what I mean? So, so mm-hmm. be, be selfish with yourself. Don't be selfish as a person. Be selfish with your own self-care. Look after yourself. I, 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 read, I, I read a lot, but not enough. And I'll tell you something, expressing gratitude. 
and a gratitude journal. I am not that wishy-washy where I'm all fluffy, air clouds about it. I write it down. I write it down like a scientist. I write down why I'm grateful for it, what I'm grateful for, and why I'm grateful for it. Not just what I'm grateful for. Everybody, I could tell you I'm grateful for having X amount of pound, but why? Why am I? Because it wasn't always like that. I remember the days where I was living off twenty pound a day. I remember them taking my house away. I remember them taking my car away. I remember having going to an insolvency. I remember having nothing. You know what I mean? That's why mm. I said, gratitude. So so go deep with your gratitude. And also one other thing, affirmations. They are the biggest thing in my life in personal development. I write down like a scientist things that I've and I'm intending to do, and I write down in detail how I'm going to feel. Until I, until the hairs on my hands stand up, and I write down, down the religiously, and so when I drift from it, I realise I've drifted from it because I I I experience a bit of doubt or a bit of, uh, and then I go back to my practice, you know, and get myself into that vibration. So affirmations, gratitude, and be careful who you're listening to and what you're listening to and what you're reading. Three huge tips, Gary. Be dirty, not footballer. But the man who's going to have the six pack come July. We can't wait to see the before and afters. We're, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no pressure <laughs> now. Look, Gary, thanks very much for jumping on. It's been a blast. I, I, I only knew that. So uh, thanks for joining us on the Breadwinners podcast. Where can people find you first before we finish up? Uh, two main places for me, probably LinkedIn or or Instagram, Gary B. Doherty Official on on Instagram and Gary B. Doherty on LinkedIn. They're the two places I'm most responsive to. Um, not Think Networks pages. <laughs> you, you, you will get me, but you'll not get me directly. I'm sure they'll find you. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for joining us on the Brain Owner Thank Podcast. You, everybody. Thank you.